The scripture reading this morning will be incorporated into our message. The title of my message today is Finishing Well. God calls us as the church to finish well in what we do. God calls you as a Christian in your life not knowing the number of days that you have left to finish strong, to finish well, to finish in obedience to finish in faithfulness to what God has done in your life. Love that hymn for all the saints who from their labors rest, who thee by faith before the world confess. Thy name, O Jesus, be forever blessed. Alleluia. You may be singing that in heaven today. All Saints Day was technically on Friday. The 1st of November is designated as All Saints Day. And a year or two ago, our church decided that we would make that a very special day in the life of the church. That in a few minutes, you will have the opportunity to share the names of those to share the names of those saints who have gone on before us. Sainthood, unfortunately, has an unrealistic ex, uh, reputation in our society and culture. When we think about saints, we think about people who are perfect people with halos. And the truth is, there are no perfect people. They're not real. But their presence in the kingdom of God is real. Romans 1 says to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You are a saint. If you have been called by God into his kingdom, you are a saint. Perfect? Far from it. But saints, according to the scriptures, are not those who have died and gone on before us or people that perhaps did great things in the life of the church. But the saints are the people of God. The saints are your brothers and sisters in the family of God. Paul says in 1 Corinthians, Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Sothenus, our brother, to the church of God, which is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ. That means to be set apart. Jesus, who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints with all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a verse in Revelation, great verse, Revelation 12, 11, speaking of the saints that have gone on before us. They overcame him. They overcame him, or Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Right now, my mind reminds me of the story of Columbine. Back then, it was quite a shock. Unfortunately, now it seems to happen all too frequently. 
But in the story of Columbine, there was a story of a young girl named Casey, who was a saint. She was a believer. And in the story of Casey, as the boys went through the library, they found her underneath a desk. And they asked her, do you believe in God? And she said, yes. And they pulled the trigger and they took that young girl's life. The saints, they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Many of you perhaps have read to your children or read growing up the story of the Velveteen Rabbit. It's a book written by Marjorie Williams and it tells the story of a toy rabbit who is given to a young boy as a Christmas present. And the toys talk to each other when people aren't around. The little rabbit befriends a threadbare old hobby horse, learning from him the secrets of what is called nursery magic, including the mysterious concept of becoming real. What is real? asked the rabbit one day. Does it mean having things that buzz inside you or a stick out handle? Real isn't how you are made said the skin horse. It's a thing that happens to you. When a child loves you for a long, long time, not just to play with, but really loves you, then you become real. Does it hurt? asked the rabbit. Sometimes, said the skin horse, for he was always truthful. When you are real, you don't mind being hurt. Does it happen all at once, like being wound up, he asked, or bit by bit? It doesn't happen all at once, said the skin horse. You become. It takes a long time. Generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off and your eyes drop out and you get loose all in the joints and very shabby. But these things don't matter at all because once you are real, you can't be ugly except to people who don't understand. And thus begins the Velveteen Rabbit's own journey toward becoming real, which as you might imagine is not just about becoming more realistic like the other rabbits who can jump and run and play, but becoming more true. <clears throat> it's about discovering the light that radiates from within a person when they have given themselves over to a life of deep, and faithful love. These are the people that we honor today. These are the people who have become very real in our lives. So, in the midst of life, we are in death. And so this morning on All Saints Sunday, we also summon the memory of those stories that have ended. Those we love and see no longer and yet are no less real because they are absent. In fact, they are even more real. Real in our hearts. Real as we feel the weight of love for them. Particularly on this day real in that their lives and their legacy cannot be destroyed real in the sense that we are bound together 
for all time. In the Apostles' Creed, we talk about the communion of saints. Don't think about that. Don't hear many sermons about that. But there is a community of faith. The communion of saints. Those who have lived and died in Christ who have gone before us and for whose lives we give thanks to God today. So I want you to look at these two pictures. Do you remember, I uh, forget the name of the magazine when you were a kid. There was a magazine that was handed out and, and uh, huh? highlights. Thank you, Elaine. Highlights. And they would have pictures in there and you'd have to find the differences. You know, maybe one girl had a bow in her hair and another one didn't. So on. Can you find the differences in here? Look very carefully. One is a saint. And one is a sinner. And you can't tell the difference. Because there isn't a difference. Those of us who call ourselves sinners are also saints in the eyes of God. And the opposite is true. Those of us who are saints are also sinners. I want to conclude with the words of Reverend William Clock as I've looked at a lot of things about All Saints Sunday. This is what is most meaningful to me. And I hope these words are meaningful to you. If you would like copies of this, there may be a couple of um, PowerPoint slide sheets out. If there isn't, please let me know. I think this is worth noting as we close. And yet, as it is said, in the midst of life, we are in death. So this morning, on All Saints Sunday, we summon the memory of those whose stories have ended those whom we love and see no longer, and yet who are no less real, simply because they are absent. In fact, we might say that they are even more real now, blessed and at peace in the near presence of the living God. Our beloved dead are so real now that our limited senses cannot quite perceive them, except in our hearts in those moments when we still feel the weight of our love for them, how it endures beyond death, how it cannot be destroyed, how we are bound together for all time, beyond all time. We say their names out loud, each one a life, now infused with eternity, and in the silences between we listen for the music of heaven. And so here we find ourselves, beloved ones, saints in progress, weary hearts, still daring to believe in nursery magic. Here we are suspended on this November morning between life and death, between a warmth, between warmth and winter, between the promise of the future and the tenderness of the past. Here we are asking what is true and what is real and what is worth living and dying for and knowing in the end that the answer can only be love, that it can only be in the name of love, which is Jesus. I conclude with Paul's words. In, Hebrew, uh, in Hebrews chapter 12, Therefore, we, we also, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. 
Remember what I've said about those words sitting down at the right hand? In biblical days, when someone would read the scriptures and they were finished and there was nothing more to be said, the person would sit down. It was an indication that it's been completed. Isn't it interesting in the resurrection story that when the women in one of the gospels came to the tomb, they found the angel sitting. That is symbolic. Jesus cried on the cross to tell us die. It is finished. But there is a great place for us on that day when we will be reunited with those who have gone before us, welcoming us with open arms into the kingdom of God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for these precious promises. We thank you that those who live and die in Christ will rise with Christ and reign with Christ. And so, Lord, our lives are in your hands. You appointed the time of our birth. And you have appointed and determined the time of our death. We look forward to that day when we shall be transformed and renewed with spiritual resurrected bodies standing and singing around the throne of grace with those who have gone before us. Glory to the Lamb. Alleluia. Glory to the Lamb that was slain. Amen.